This is Twit. I don't know about you, but I certainly remember. Uh, maybe I'm I'm just young enough to remember that uh, back in high school. Um, there, you know, you'd, you'd go to the computer lab or to the library, which had computers. And I was kind of a, a, of a, a goody two shoes. So I mostly just did the work that I was there to do. But there was, certainly would be students who um, would, you, you'd look over and their computers had YouTube open or, or some other site open. Uh, Twitter wasn't as popular at the time, slash not around. And so they, you know, were br- browsing through there. And then at some point, uh, our school system got uh, some content blockers in place for time wasters and other sites. And suddenly you couldn't access those sites anymore. And so you had to circumvent those through different means or uh, just kind of deal with it. And so content blockers are nothing new in schools. Uh, but sometimes these algorithmic surveillance tools just miss the mark. And we are joined today by Todd Feathers, who's written over at uh, Motherboard's Vice Public, or excuse me, uh, Vice's Motherboard publication about uh, content blockers truly missing the mark. Uh, Welcome to the show, Todd. Well, thank you guys so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, we are happy to have you here. So let's kick things off by talking about um, some of the the different uh, content blockers that you uh, that, that you were investigated. And let's before we get into kind of where they missed the mark, uh, maybe you can explain kind of what these content blockers are uh, advertised to block. What what are they meant to block as uh, part of their systems? Yeah, well, as you mentioned before, these have been around for a while. There's kind of a new slew of companies that have popped up in in the last few years, particularly um, in response and advertising themselves as ways to prevent things like school shootings, um, you know, teen suicide and and protect kids from child predators. And so I look specifically at two companies for this story, Bark and Securely, but there's a couple others that are really popular um, in schools. Go Guardian, Gaggle are some of the main ones. And some of them, like Bark, cater to both schools and they offer private options for parents to use on their kids at home. And these tools can do anything from just, you know, block content or filter content on, you know, browsers to monitoring everything that students type in emails, everything that they type into, you know, Twitter, or Facebook. Um, and they're really, the way that they're described by a lot of privacy groups is spyware for children. Gotcha. Um, spyware for children. Uh, and so, yes, they, uh, at least in schools, are are uh, meant to kind of block things. And I think that this is an important thing. I want to kind of go a little bit deeper with you here, Todd, because back in the day, I remember that the content blockers were kind of nothing more than we block uh, certain websites. And so the website itself was blocked, but it didn't go farther than that. So um, again, just to kind of to really uh, point it out here, these are things that are like scanning what's on the computer. They're, you know, monitoring every part of uh, the the child's activity, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so, for example, as part of the story, I, I bought a subscription to Bark's plan for, for children and used it on a, a test account where I sent myself various emails. I visited websites. I uploaded you know, certain kinds of photos to, to Google Drive to see what would get caught and what wouldn't. Um, and, and it really picks up a, a lot of stuff. Um, and that's on my own device. But a lot of the times either deployed on school issued Chromebooks where, you know, the the software essentially has, you know, root access to everything that a student is going to do. Gotcha. So then we've got to kind of get into uh, the, the the details here, the, the thing that really kind of uh, made it stick out. Um, let's talk about what um, Motherboard did as part of the testing um, to determine that uh, Bark and, um, and I can't remember the other one, uh, that they kind of uh, were blocking, perhaps one would argue, the wrong content uh, based on what you sent. So could you talk a little bit about your investiga- investigative process here? Yeah, absolutely. So, so this started, story started when a student who goes to a high school that uses Securely, which is the other company that we, we kind of investigated here as its web filtering um, platform. And the student reached out to us and said, you know, I, I was doing some research for a couple school projects and you know, I was editing a Wikipedia article about a business and 
I realized that a lot of the websites I was trying to visit that had to do with LGBTQ issues, with sexual health um, and, and advocacy groups for sex workers were being blocked. Um, and so he took it you know, on his own to go out and investigate a little bit more. He, he came up with this list of about 60 websites that he shared with us that had been blocked um, you know, buy securely, uh, you know, using his school issued device and that they included, you know, some kind of inane things like gayrealtynetwork.com, which is just a website where you can go in and look for a, you know, a LGBTQ real estate agent, if that's what you would like to help you find a home. And, you know, you look at this website and really the only thing you can think of that would explain it being blocked is that it has the word gay on the homepage. Um, but then, you know, there are some more, you know, sinister and damaging examples. There are websites for mental health organizations for teens um, that you cannot access if, you know, at least at the time that we started this investigation, that you could not access uh, if your school was using securely. Um, so we, we use that data and I confirmed that with some other sources who have access to securely. And then we separately tested Bark by, like I said, signing up for a subscription and just sending a bunch of emails with, you know, various kinds of messages that you would hope, you know, would get flagged and wouldn't get flagged. The the lead of the story is, you know, a message I sent to myself saying, you know, I intend to join a neo-Nazi group, um, the Texas Rebel Knights of the Ku Klux Klan. And Bark CEO told us in an email that that message shouldn't have been flagged because it, it didn't contain enough context to indicate any kind of grooming or <laughs> intention to join a, a white supremacy group. Uh, oh, Okay. Um, that was one of the things, uh, that, that kind of stuck out to me was the amount of uh, editorializing here a little bit, but also I do feel it's, it's a little bit objective to say, uh, blatant gaslighting that was taking place whenever you reached out to these companies. Um, I, what, one of the things that I really love about any of the work that's done, uh, from motherboard is, is really trying to take any statement that the company makes and uh, kind of try to verify it. And so there was one situation where the the company claimed that their product helped to uh, stop X number of of uh, school shootings in a given year uh, or in a given period of time since it's it's been around. And um, the after kind of inquiring about that, uh, they moved that data or that, that, that statistic kind of out of the main uh, part of it. Can you talk about then what happened whenever um, the, I believe it was the CEO or somebody got back to you and said, look, we, we turn around that, that data all the time. Can you talk a little bit about that process? Yeah, absolutely. So, so that particular statistic, which you was displayed. It was essentially the first thing that you would see if you went to Bark's homepage was that the company had, and, and I think this is almost a direct quote, if not a little bit paraphrased, um, prevented 16 school shootings or, or helped prevent 16 school shootings, um, which is a, a really bold claim. But you can see why if you're a parent or if you're a school administrator, that is the kind of thing that would really help sell you on a product. And and that number has been bothering me for a couple of years, almost two and a half years now. I, I'd done a story previously about these kinds of companies um, and, and tried to fact check that claim and, and really couldn't get anything conclusive on it. So when we set out to do the story again, um, I, I really wanted to make sure that we, we tried to get some kind of answer to that. And we asked Bark for any documentation or evidence or anything that could help us verify um, you know, that 16 school shootings prevented number. And then we also asked just for, you know, the definition of what do you mean by prevented? Um, you know, are you saying that Bark is the reason this didn't happen or just that Bark, you know, caught something that was part of a long chain that prevented a school shooting from happening? And Bark didn't provide any evidence. Um, they didn't provide any real explanation for, for how they reached that 16 number. What they did do is they removed it from the the prominent place on the homepage. And the CEO, again, in an email wrote to us that, you know, they, they regularly rotate these stats. And in a certain sense, that's true. Um, you know, the two other stats that accompany it are, you know, the number of children that the company says that they protect um, currently. And I, I think the other one is, you know, number of dangerous incidents or something detected. And those periodically go up you know, as you would assume, the company gets more customers. But the school shooting number has stayed the same for all of 2021, according to you know, our review of the times it's been saved on the Internet Archive. Um, so they, they haven't been rotating that until they were asked about it. 
Yeah. Uh, that's, that's, that was a really interesting, uh, piece of the story that I thought was, uh, important to, to point out. Um, at, at the end of the day, you know, we've got, uh, these algorithmic, uh, methods of trying to, uh, block and unblock certain content. And you talk about filtering morality. Um, could you, could you talk a little bit more about that, uh, portion of, of your piece? Yeah, so this kind of goes back to, to what you started with in the intro is, you know, the, the days when we would go into the computer lab and, you know, I my website that I would use during my time on the computers was addictinggames.com. You could play all <laughs> kinds of stupid little games on there, right? Um, and, and, you know, during that time when I was in school and using that, the content was being filtered. There was a web filter in place. There's a, a 2000 law. Um, there are a law that was enacted in 2000 that requires all public schools and libraries that want to reserve a certain or want to receive a certain kind of funding from the federal government to deploy some kind of web filter that blocks, you know, children from accessing harmful content. Now, what constitutes harmful content is really not explained in the law. And, you know, it, it hasn't been litigated to a very high degree of clarity. Um, so for, for years, we've come across situations where, you know, libraries and schools would buy a product where they could check a click a box that would say, you know, block any content related to alternative lifestyles or sexuality, which is, you know, I, I think on the face of it, pretty discriminatory. And, and that's been challenged, um, but it, but only in the context of an administrator purposefully going in and saying that you can't access this content and a human making that decision. But what's different now is that, you know, algorithms are making these decisions and algorithms are imbued with, you know, human bias. And some of that bias is fed back into companies like Securely and Barks Web Filters because they take feedback from administrators. And if a school tells them that, you know, we don't want our students to be able to access this website, they may block it. And then it's blocked for not just that school, but schools across the country. 